I'm not your typical 23-year-old. I stay in every weekend, eat frozen fruit instead of fresh, and honestly, I couldn't tell you the last time I went out for a coffee or meal with my friends. It's not because I don't want to. It's because I can't afford to. Raise your hand if you're feeling the pressure from the rising cost of living. The cost of living has soared and everyone is feeling the pinch. Now I want you to imagine working the same hours that you do right now, but your income was slashed in half. What would that feel like? In the healthcare industry, many of our essential professions, such as psychology, nursing, and social work, require students to take on mandatory, unpaid placements. I'm currently studying my Masters of Psychology. And across my two-year degree, and in order to become a generally registered psychologist, it is a requirement that I work 1,000 hours of placement. For the past year and a half, I had been consistently working two to three days a week for free. That is 750 hours of unpaid work. There is no denying that placements and our supervisor's support is essential for our learning. But when I'm on placement, I'm not just in the corner observing. I'm allocated my own client load, responsible for client admin, session planning, treatment, diagnostic formulation, detailed record keeping, all in addition to conducting the appointment itself. I cannot stand here and ignore the crippling impact unpaid placement has had on the mental and physical health of my friends. I cannot help but foresee the financial repercussions of this training model for healthcare students, and by extension, women. And I will not ignore the impact it has had on me. We're all familiar with the broke student narrative. Living off two-minute noodles and in a share house that is falling apart is seen as a rite of passage. I want to challenge that narrative particularly for students providing life-saving services. Students in our critical industries are being sent into emotionally and physically demanding workplaces, like hospitals, with high-risk clients, and are being expected to provide a high-quality service whilst they are struggling. We are taught that no deep learning or work happens when you don't have your base financial, physical and emotional needs met. How are we expecting students to provide these services for free? Day after day, we're trying to balance their own physical mental health, full-time study and part-time work to make ends meet. There are simply not enough hours in the day. Students' cost of living concerns are being dismissed and justified by this estranged idea that a student's low income is offset by their low expenses. Whilst this may have been the case in the past, it is no longer a reality for students today. Wages and government supports have stagnated. Whilst we have seen exponential increases in the cost of rent, food, healthcare, and education. Now on top of this, I've had to pay $830 in professional registration fees to provide these services and hundreds more dollars towards vaccinations, hospital parking, and professional clothing. So considering these costs and the reduced capacity to earn a livable wage, students from low income, diverse, and First Nations backgrounds are being disproportionately affected here. These students are putting themselves through university to empower themselves improve their financial prospects, and to help their community. But in return, they are being left further in debt, disillusioned, and burnt out before even entering the paid workforce. Unpaid placement is sending a very damaging message to healthcare students, and by extension, women. 
There is an inextricable link between the healthcare industry and women. 80% of the healthcare industry is held up by women, and most of the people in these healthcare degrees that are expected to work for free are women. 1,000 hours may seem like a snapshot in time, but compound this with the time off from expected caregiving and domestic labour. We start to see the pattern that underlies those shocking statistics we have all heard on workplace gender inequality. Whether we like to admit it or not, an employee's value is communicated through monetary compensation. Unpaid placement is sending us a very clear message. It is telling me that even in my sixth year of psychology training, my skills and knowledge do not hold inherent value, whilst the same expectations would never be held for our trades and apprentices, who are paid whilst they are being trained. This message normalizes the expectation of free labor and once internalized, will play a dangerous and lasting role in systemic issues like gender-based wealth, pay, and superannuation gaps. But this is just the way things are, right? It's how becoming a health professional works. Students have always made it through unpaid placement. So maybe I'm the problem. Did I make a mistake? Have I done something wrong? And if I don't, if I don't make it through, and I don't belong, is my only option to leave. Unpaid placement forces students to internalize and blame themselves for the truly traumatic experiences they suffer throughout. When I finish my degree, I don't know if I want to continue in this career. The sheer stress, mental exhaustion and fatigue is forcing me to consider leaving the psychology industry that I have spent six years working towards. I've given up self-care, self-compassion, and time with my family that I will never get back. I'm anxious, I'm depressed, and I feel like every day is a battle. And these are feelings I have never experienced before unpaid placement. As a woman of colour from a low-income background, I know that I have valuable skills and knowledge that could help patients that look like me. But after what I've had to give up, I frankly have nothing left to give. This profession is built on the ability to communicate, to be compassionate and to empathise. But when you're not in a place where you can do that, you can't help but feel like you're failing everyone around you. Although the last two years have been stressful, I've had some incredible experiences during my time studying and working. I've found joy in the moments that I made a difference, particularly when working with culturally and linguistically diverse people. But I need to know that my work is valued and I deserve to be compensated accordingly. Whether that be through paid placements that follow an apprenticeship model, stipends through university, additional supports from the government, or perhaps a revision of placement requirements altogether. Placements need to be realistic so students can learn whilst maintaining their well being. These students are our future, they are our healthcare professionals in the years to come. They take care of us when we're most in need. So it's time we start taking care of them. Thank you.